The presence of cations and anions can be determined by a sequence of logical chemical tests. It's important to follow a sequence so that certain ions can be eliminated in the process. Iron, barium, calcium, lead and copper ions present in a sample need to be determined by using a series of tests. A simple sequence of conducting the tests is shown in the flowchart. Sodium hydroxide is firstly added to the aqueous sample containing the ion or ions. This is added first as most metal hydroxides are insoluble, except calcium and barium. So if a precipitate does not form, we can assume calcium or barium ions are present and then perform a flame test using a fresh sample. If the flame is apple green, then it contains barium ions. And if it is orange red, when the sample is sprayed, it contains calcium ions. If on the other hand, a precipitate forms when sodium hydroxide solution is added to the cation sample, first check the color. If the precipitate is white in color, it may contain lead two ions with the precipitate being lead to hydroxide. To confirm, add some potassium iodide solution to a fresh sample of the cation. And if a yellow precipitate forms, then it is lead to iodide, and this confirms the presence of lead to ions. Since lead is poisonous, it should never be tested using the flame test, as toxic vapors may be ingested. If the precipitate appears to be a blue gelatinous substance, it may contain copper two ions, and the precipitate formed is copper two hydroxide. For confirmation, some ammonia solution needs to be added, and if the solid dissolves to form a royal blue solution, then copper two ions are present, as the color is due to the formation of the copper ammonia complex ion. If the colour of the hydroxide precipitate is orange-brown or green, it probably contains Fe3+, or Fe2+, respectively. We can confirm the ion by addition of potassium thiocyanate solution to a fresh sample of the cation. If the resulting solution is a blood-red colour, then the sample contains Fe3 plus ions. But if there is no visible change, it contains Fe2 plus ions. The anions, carbonate, chloride, phosphate and sulphate, need to be identified in a sample. Once again, a logical sequence of chemical testing needs to take place. First, nitric acid should be added to our sample. If bubbling is observed, this is due to carbon dioxide gas being produced, which means carbonate ions are present. Nitric acid is used so that the nitrate ions do not interfere with the testing. All nitrates are soluble. Carbonate ions react with the hydrogen ions in the acid to form carbon dioxide gas and water. If, on the other hand, there is no bubbling when nitric acid is added, chloride, phosphate or sulphate may be present. Some ammonium molybdate solution may now be added to the sample and gently heated. If a yellow precipitate, ammonium phosphomolybdate, forms, then we know phosphate ions are present. If no yellow precipitate forms, it means phosphate ions are not present. We need to obtain a fresh sample to test for the presence of sulphate or chloride ions. We need to test for sulphate ions first by adding barium nitrate. It helps to slightly acidify the solution. Solubility rules tell us that if sulphate ions are present, a white precipitate of barium sulphate will form. However, since barium chloride is soluble, no precipitate will form. If no precipitate forms, a 
fresh sample needs to be obtained and silver nitrate needs to be added. If a creamy coloured precipitate forms, which darkens on standing, then it is silver chloride, and we have confirmed that chloride ions were present. Please note that the logical steps in distinguishing between sulphate ions and chloride ions involves firstly eliminating the sulphate ions by using barium nitrate. If we had added silver nitrate first, then both silver sulphate and silver chloride would have precipitated, and we could not have distinguished between the presence of sulphate ions and chloride ions in the sample. When determining the identity of cations and anions in a sample, it is important to follow a logical sequence of chemical tests.